I have an undersized hole. Well, four of them actually. I have to get four of these bushings back into the chassis. They're a press fit. Or at least they were before some guy decided to cover the chassis in a thick layer of zinc. If I was smart, I would have burned the zinc out with a torch before painting everything. But, well, here we are. As you can imagine, this was a long and painful process that involved much grinding, trial fitting, and more grinding. I had to be careful because overshooting would basically wreck the chassis. But on this occasion, that didn't happen. And eventually, the first bushing was successfully installed. And after perfecting my method on the first one, the other three went in no problem at all. Nope, that's a lie. This took me hours. Never again. Now the next job is to fit the steering relay into the chassis. Lucky for me this involved more grinding away zinc. You may remember from an earlier video that I fabricated this solid hole to be an improvement over the standard sheet metal version. I machined the bore on the lathe but it distorted slightly with welding and also I can't maintain perfect concentricity removing zinc with a flap wheel anyway. So the fit isn't going to be precise. You can see the relay can twist a little bit, but it is pretty tight, and installed from the correct end, it's rock solid. Also, this isn't the actual relay I'm going to use, and I think the real one measures a smidge larger. If necessary, I can use retaining compound to take up voids, but I think this fit is going to end up pretty good. The next job is to drill out these holes to fit this retainer plate. Now, I may not need this retainer plate because of the way I've machined a solid bore in here, but I'm going to fit it anyway because, well, it's supposed to be there. This is supposed to be a tight fit over here, by the way. That's a problem for later. I did tap these holes for quarter inch bolts while I was making the part on the bench. But of course, that was a waste of time because now they're completely filled with zinc. I could have softened the zinc with a torch and possibly re tapped them. But at this point, with paint on the chassis, that's not something I'm going to do. So I'm drilling the threads out larger and re-tapping them for 5 sixteenths American fine. And this is a bit of a milestone because I don't think there's anything else I need to do to the chassis. It's done. It's time to bolt stuff together. I'm going to start with the springs. They hang off the chassis with these bolts that go through the bushings. And the bolts are pretty crusty. Each spring hangs from one bushing in the chassis and a pair of shackles or spring hangers. So three bolts per spring. These are 9 16 UNF bolts. That's pretty chunky and not something I can buy from any local engineering supplier. So I'm going to clean them up. Ultimately, what happened was, I quickly skimmed the heads because they were heavily pitted. Cleaned them in acid, and I was going to black oxide them. That's the original finish, the same finish I used on the head bolts. Anyway, my Parker phosphate mix is spent, or I've done something to mess it up, and it just wasn't working. So rather than waste time trying to sort that out, I decided it was better just to buy new bolts. Now, I managed to order these bolts from a place in New Zealand. So I didn't buy them as Land Rover parts from the UK. But the downside is that I could only get them in half inch increments, in terms of length. The bolts thread into the shackle and a lock nut. Both of these together take up almost the entire available thread on a bolt. So the length is quite critical, and the original Land Rover bolts are sized down to 8th inch increments. That's why you eagle-eyed Land Rover aficionados might notice washes where there normally aren't any. I needed to move some of the bolts slightly, so I didn't bottom out the threads. 
So before I try and lift everything into place with the weight of the axles, I want to test fit the new springs by themselves, just to make sure they fit. I forgot to mention, I bought new springs. I know that I refurbished the original springs, but they were pretty pitted, and I said in that video that I'd probably end up replacing them. I should mention that I'm probably not going to put these springs on my Land Rover. I think new springs are likely. Looking good. Okay, so I've just been test fitting the spring to make sure everything works before I put the axle on. And uh, I have a bit of a problem. The spring hits the chassis before the bolt holes line up. On the left hand side, it almost works. I can get the bolt started, but not all the way through. And even if I could, Obviously, I don't want the spring banging on the underside of the chassis. So, to show you what's going on, this is the new spring. This is one of the original springs. And if I measure roughly somewhere about here, we've got 30 odd millimeters. Whereas on the original spring, it's about 20 something. So, this is a bit annoying, but not a major problem. I purchased these springs locally, well, relatively locally, so they can go back and be adjusted. I wonder if the problem may have occurred because archers typically make springs, but they happen to have these front springs sitting on a shelf, in stock. They don't sell Land Rover springs every day anymore, and the way the guy told me they had some in stock, it sounded like it was a bit unusual. I wonder if these were sitting on a shelf because they didn't fit someone else's vehicle in the long forgotten past. Anyway, while that was being sorted, I moved on to the rear springs. And there was a minor issue with those as well. The centre pins have been installed the wrong way round. The round end of the pin is what locates the axle, so it has to be on top. No drama, it only took me a few minutes to swap them around. Now here's a tip if you're pulling these apart for the first time. The big nylock nut is just acting as a lock nut. The bolts are threaded into the shackles as well. So avoid the big hammer until you're sure you've unthreaded the bolts from the shackles. And as for me tightening everything up, I'm only lightly tightening everything for now. The suspension needs to be settled under the full weight of the vehicle before these bolts are torqued up fully. don't fit. With the ways. Interesting. I have a bit of a fitment problem. Oh, it's miles off. I can't push the spring in between the fixing points on the chassis. Mm. So the other side is about, about 70 millimeters. Zero that. I think I know what is going on. Let's check. Yep. About four and a half millimetres too small. I think this has taken a tag by a forklift. Or possibly the chassis has been strapped down too hard. It's a bit of a problem. You can't see what I'm doing because I forgot that I have to point the camera at stuff for you guys to see it. I'm just using a piece of round bar and a big hammer. Perfect. Overshot. So the rear springs fit fine now, and while my little smart repair paint job dries, let's talk about U-bolts. Ordering new U-bolts for an old Land Rover can be a little confusing, and this is very specific advice for someone who might be wanting to do that, so feel free to skip ahead if that's not you. 
you'll see that there are three part numbers for each U-bolt. Same for the rear axle. And which part number applies to you depends on what axle suffix you have. You can see my front axle is suffix E and the rear axle is suffix D. The problem is that some part suppliers will say some numbers are obsolete or superseded by another number or they just won't have the part number you're searching for. So my tip is, don't worry about the axle suffix, it doesn't matter. What's going on here is that when Land Rover moved from axle suffix C to D, they changed the U-bolts from Whitworth to metric. In other words, if you like metric, use the metric part numbers. If you like Whitworth, use those instead. So for example, the earlier part numbers, in this case say 562637, are Whitworth. 7 16th British Standard Fine to be precise. And if you look at the next numbers down, like 624027, that's going to be M12. And as for the U-bolt part numbers that start with NRC, I believe they are the same U-bolt as the previous part number. The only difference being that Land Rover started including the nuts with the U-bolts. I personally wanted to go with the Whitworth versions, just because there isn't another metric fixing on a series Land Rover, and the last thing you think about is your 17mm spanner. But I am going to use the M12 versions, only because I didn't have a full set of either Whitworth or metric, and I could get the metric ones I needed from G Rover and Wanaka, so overnight courier compared to ordering from the UK. Now you might think that you should go with metric, just because 12mm is bigger, and therefore stronger than 7 16ths of an inch. But the actual strap part of the bolt isn't 12mm, and they aren't that much different. So, the rear and front U-bolts are mostly the same. The rear are a little bit longer because the springs are a bit thicker. That's also why there are different part numbers for the petrol, diesel and 109 models. Slightly different lengths to suit different springs. The only special U-bolt is the one that goes on the front. You can see the loop is flatter. This one goes right up against the diff. Now when you buy these, the finish seems to be completely random. These ones have a dry and thin oxide finish, and these ones have a terrible paint finish. Both are going to be bright rusty orange within 5 minutes of being outside. So I stripped the paint off the painted ones, and gave them all a better coating of black paint. In a rare moment of genius, I discovered that these wheel jacks are perfect for rolling diffs around. Oh, this is perfect. On the rear axle, there are these little shields for the brake lines. My original ones are pretty buggered, they've been refinished a couple of times before. So I splashed out on these fancy laser cut stainless steel versions. When I say splashed out, they were cheap, a lot less than replacement standard ones. The only thing with them is that the edges are razor blade sharp. Crazy sharp. Even though they're just going to sit under a vehicle, I had to do something about it, because just walking past them seemed to put micro cuts all over my hands. I'm not complaining though, I think these come from a small one man operation, and like I said, they were well priced, and I'm happy to do my own deburring considering that. Now, the spring, and the backing plate thing, and the axle all get sandwiched together, and it can be a bit of a moisture trap. The axle seat is hollow and it fills up with water and condensation which over time will rust out the top of the spring or in the case of the rear axle, the brake backing plate. I know that's probably not going to be an issue now because the backing plate is stainless steel, but for the sake of 15 seconds, I sprayed some long-term wax on the surfaces. And now it's just a matter of wrestling the heavy lumps together. There's a hole in the underside of the axle that fits over the pin on top of the leaf springs, so you have to locate the axle over the pin on each side, and then just clamp it all together with the U-bolts. And just in case anybody notices, because you internet commenters tend to be next level pedantic, I am using plain nuts to start with, just so that it's easy for me to spin them up by hand. 
You'll see I go back and change them for nylocks once everything is held together. Okay, before I tighten up the U-bolt nuts, I want to check the alignment of the rear axle, because there's a bit of slop in the other side. This is happening because the locating hole on the underside of the axle is larger than it should be. I don't know how that would happen, and it doesn't look overlized or anything like that. I guess it's possible Land Rover left some adjustment on purpose, but I doubt it. Probably someone drilled it out to fit the head of a larger bolt or something. I have no idea why or how, but I want to make sure that both sides are aligned the same. So on this side, 535. Five. With the axle in the fully forwards position, which is where it's going to want to be, pushing the car, I think. 535, five. so exactly the same. I'll go ahead and remove all the temporary nuts and put nylocks on and torque them up to spec. I just want to add, in terms of the axle being loose on the pin, nothing has changed since I've owned the vehicle and I've done probably 30,000 Ks before starting this rebuild. With everything clamped down, it's rock solid. If the axle was able to jiggle back and forth, I think there'd have been a major problem within a short space of time. Anyway, I've marked the position of the axle with a paint pen and if anything looks like it's moving, I'll deal with it in the future. But I don't think it's going to be an issue. Now moving on to the front. And the front springs have been fixed up so that they don't hit the chassis anymore. Perfect. As far as fitting the front axle goes, it's the same as the rear. But I hit another problem. These U-bolts are not quite long enough. I wonder if these new springs are marginally thicker. I'm going to hit pause here because there's some explaining to do. I completely forgot that my vehicle was originally a diesel and the diesels came with slightly heavier duty front springs. That's part of the reason these U-bolts are a little short. These U-bolts are not quite long enough. Because I have the bolts that are intended to be used with the petrol springs. They should still work though, but here's the second reason they don't. My original 11 leaf diesel spring is made from 11 64ths thick steel. That doesn't exist in 2022, so my new springs are made with 3 16ths instead, which adds about 5 millimeters of total thickness to the spring pack. Now that's an easy problem to solve as you'll see in a minute, but since I was ordering new springs anyway, I should have taken the opportunity to put petrol spec front springs in it, which are presumably a little softer. This isn't really a problem, because I thought it drove pretty good before. And saying that, had I thought about it in time, I definitely would have gone with petrol front springs instead. Now, back to my U-bolts being a little short. I'm going to solve the problem by removing one leaf. Apparently I have stiffness to spare, so this will help a little in that regard as well. And look at the way I have the spring clamped. What an idiot. I underestimated the springiness of that one bottom leaf. And 10,000 years later, I found the nut. So it's just a matter of putting the nut back on without the bottom leaf. and repeat for the other side. This time I used an extra clamp. I want to point out that when you buy springs from a place that's been making leaf springs for 70 years, they put some kind of grease or anti-seize in between the leaves. 
I had a few people comment on my spring video calling me an idiot for doing that. I mean, they didn't specifically call me an idiot, they just implied that the world was going to end. With the bottom leaf removed from each front spring, I can now easily get the nuts started. And that's it. Front end in position. Now this. I don't see any reason why I shouldn't put this back in the chassis right now. Hmm, we have a problem. The problem is I can't push the hoist any further forward and I'm nowhere near far enough back to put the engine down. I reckon that looks pretty good. I think I may be missing a bracket down in here. I'll just check the parts catalog. Found it. Lost it. Now, I've put a nylock on the bottom here. I know it's supposed to be a normal nut with a spring washer, but I don't have one. And I worry about how annoying it is to undo this. One day when I have to undo it. Here we go. Oh. Here we go again. We should touch down on my side first. There goes the gearbox. Let's have a look. So we're very close at the back of the gearbox. This is resting in about the right spot. The other side is still a wee way off. So I'll just drop a couple of bolts down in these holes. These aren't the correct bolts, but I'll do for now just to hold it in place. Now when I lower it down, it should stay more or less in the right spot. There she is. And there we are. Not quite a rolling chassis yet. I should probably do something about this pile of wheels next. But for now, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.